Hi, welcome to No Kill in Motion. This is David Smith from the no, from No Kill Colorado. Aubrey Kavanaugh from No Kill Huntsville. Alan Rosenberg from New Jersey Animal Observer, and Shirley Marsh from Yes Biscuit. Um, we're talking about ranking the nation's top no kill shelters. This is actually Alan's uh, work that he's been doing over well probably took him longer than, than a couple of months, but over the last couple of months, we've been, he's been revealing more and more of these statistics. So I'm gonna let you actually start, uh, Alan. I'm curious of the, 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 the organization you looked at and what the ultimate ranking was in kind of short form. How can you tell us what, what actually you came up with? Okay, there were five shelters I looked at that I looked, uh, that we talked about in the last month's video which were large shelters that claim to be no kill and have great reputations. Um, fifth and last place uh, was Pima Animal Care Center in Arizona, which is a very well-known shelter. Um, they had a lot of great live release programs um, and they did really well on those. But unfortunately they were in last place simply because they failed to achieve no kill for both dogs or cats um, in every period I looked at. Um, and really, when you looked at it, there were a number of reasons for this, but it largely came down to medical, meaning their veterinary staff were able to make decisions on their own without any oversight from the executive director or euthanasia committee. And there was a very high rate of animals losing their lives for medical reasons. Um, and the really sad thing about it was Pima Animal Care had a lot of resources. Uh, a lot of funding, and they were the only shelter to have a brand new state-of-the-art facility uh, in all the periods I looked at. So they were in last place. Uh, fourth place was Can Kansas City Pet Project. Um, they had a really uh, did a really great job with adoptions. They were the best shelter by far at, at doing adoptions. But again, like Pima Animal Care Center, they fell short because they didn't achieve no kill for dogs, and largely that was due to behavior killing. And um, honestly, I was quite shocked because uh, the reasons they were killing dogs for behavior were, were pretty um, shocking or surprising to me. Uh, things like animal aggression, extreme anxiety, extreme arousal, extreme resource guarding, which was, are, are, are just not acceptable for a no-kill shelter. So um, even though they, they had a lot of good things, the, their performance with dogs, particularly on behavior, is, is really uh, what held them back, and they, they weren't no kill for dogs. Um, third place was uh, Austin Animal Center and Austin Pets Alive. Um, as people know, those are the most um, well known no kill shelters in the country. Um, they had really good statistics, but the problem I had with them were two things. Number one, the way they went about no kill, uh, they weren't accepting a lot of animals after um, COVID hit. There were a lot of stories about that and my data corroborated those stories. And also uh, they spent a lot of money and the results just weren't good enough for the amount of money they were spending on that shelter. Just the, they had the most funding of every shelter and their, the results weren't good enough to justify it. So second place was Williamson County Animal Shelter in Texas, just north of Austin. Um, they did really good. They had very low death rates um, and uh, they had good programs. Uh, really, the only reason they weren't in first place is uh, the challenge they faced was just not as, as high as the others. Their dog intake was a little lower. They didn't take as many pit bulls in. So they, they performed well, but they just weren't uh, the top ranked shelter. So the number one shelter is a shelter we talked about before, which is Lake County Animal Shelter in Florida. Um, overall, they showed the strongest respect for life. Uh, they had the best, the lowest dog death rates, um, very low cat death rates. They did a tremendous job on returning lost dogs to owners. Uh, it, in fact, it wasn't even close compared to the other shelters. Uh, they had a large shelter new to return program. And in that shelter new to return program, unlike two other shelters in this analysis, there are only shelter new to returning cats over six months of age. Uh, Pima Animal Care and Austin Animal Center were uh, shelter new to returning very young kittens under five months, which I don't agree with. Um, and they accomplished all this um, with having the least funding of all the shelters, uh, the worst facility in terms of the quality of the physical building, uh, a low amount of rescue support, 
And uh, really what they showed was uh, you can achieve no kill without spending a lot of money and you achieve no kill by most comprehensively implementing the no kill equation. All the shelters, they most comprehensively implemented the no kill equation. So that's why they were number one. You made me think about five or 10 things and we don't have that much time for it. But the one thing is the, the economics of no kill. The dollars and cents um, uh, publication from the No Kill Advocacy Center is something that I use over and over again. And I, I point to people is that there's no correlation between the amount of money spent per animal and the, uh, the save rates for open emission shelters, um, which I, I, I find that fascinating. But you know, you you kind of just showed that again inside of 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 this study. Um, we're, we're running out of time, so I want to get someone else. Aubrey, um, tell me what you thought of the uh, the study. Well, first of all, I know that Alan just did a ton of research on this, and um, I'll go ahead again when we share this discussion. I'll I'll put the links to the blogs. Um, Alan did a ton of research. It was a four part series where he set forth his results, and in each part he he covered different parts of it. Um, the thing that was the most fascinating for me, and, and I appreciated this, Alan, is the fact that you focused on the no kill equation. We've made no bones about the fact that that is the foundation that we support because the no kill equation works. Um, it's been proven time and time again, and I. It also helped to reinforce that the most important thing with the no kill equation really comes down to compassionate leadership, to really being committed to the ideal. Um, because here you are, you've got other places that have lots more resources than Lake County, Florida, lots more money. But when we come down to it, Lake County was the one that was ranked number one. The one thing that I will say is, um, and this is just good news for Lake County is, um, during the last year that your stay was based upon Alan, um, they were making plans to get in a new shelter and they now are in a new facility. So, which works great because they are now in a new place, but they also have a public which is much more engaged with what they're doing. So now that they've made the leadership decisions and made the commitment to the no kill equation, now the public will be able to come in and see what's going on and what happens when you have that wonderful leadership. So they'll be able to continue the life saving, but it's but doing it in a, in a, in a newer place, got a lot of tech. Um, it's got like a pod set up for dogs to separate them. So it's just really, um, they really are a wonderful example for municipalities across the country. I, I, I actually didn't know that they were getting new uh, mm -hmm. uh, location, which is great. I, I, I don't like when shelters, you know, use the new, the new building as the fact that they're better now, right? But I do love to see a shelter that is actually having problems get a new facility because I know how much better that makes it for staff, volunteers, and possibly going further than they did already. Um, Shirley, I know a lot of this is new to you. What do you think about what you heard about the study here today? I was very interested to hear what Alan had to say. Um, a couple things stood out to me. One, I didn't hear any statistics in there, which is kind of refreshing because um, I think it's easy to get bogged down in numbers and um, animals uh, and save rates and, and adoptions are more than numbers. So he talked about uh, a lot of things that, that, um, that are outside of that. So I liked that. And I also really like to hear um, the number one shelter uh, had the best return to owner rate. Um, I think that's something that is, uh, whether it's overlooked intentionally or unintentionally, shelters have a way to get many animals into homes simply by returning to owners and don't do it for various reasons. So I'm so glad that, that Lake County is. We have yeah, to and Lake County, um, you know, they, they improve their return to owner rate after they went no kill. Like some communities have high return to owner rates because they're wealthy, so that every every dog is chipped or licensed, so it's easy for the shelter to return its owner. But Lake County actually, um, when I talked to the director when I did a blog on them last year, um, they actually do old fashioned almost like police work or investigatory work. Like an animal comes in and they have a whole team of people looking, okay, where's this dog from? Okay knock on doors in the neighborhood, talk to their brother, talk to their sister, talk to their friend, and they ultimately find the animal. So um, I, I, it was really interesting. And um, it, they, they did a fantastic job with that. And it's, it is an overlooked area, uh, no kill, unfortunately. 
All right. Well, we're out of time. We are not done with this subject. Alan uh, didn't just put a lot of work in it. There's about 10 subjects inside of his study. So we're going to have to come back to that. But we're out of time today. Thank you for joining us. This is David at No Kill Colorado for No Kill in Motion. I'm here with Aubrey Cavanaugh from No Kill Huntsville, Alan Rosenberg from the New Jersey Animal Observer, and Shirley Marsh from the blog Yes Biscuit. We'll see you next time.